Hey everybody, it's Greg back to here. In this video, we're gonna have a closer look at the Moza Air 2 gimbal. We're gonna check out some live footage. We're gonna do a quick balance tutorial. We're gonna go over some quick facts, and we're also gonna check out everything that comes with the Moza Air 2 gimbal. So let's get started. So a couple of quick facts to start. The Moza Air Gimbal 2 weighs 1.6 kilograms, or roughly 3.5 pounds. Now, as far as the maximum payload, it can carry 4.2 kilograms, or roughly 9.2 pounds. So it's perfect for a heavier DSLR, with some zoom lenses. Now, as far as the size and weight, I didn't find it too heavy when I was out doing some test shots with it. So let's get into some of the quick facts as well. It has four accessory ports, so two on the front and two on the back. And there's control cables for different camera manufacturers like Sony, Nikon, Canon, and Panasonic. From time to time, you'll want to check with the manufacturer's website for software updates. And the reason for that is they're adding more camera compatibility all of the time so you want to check to make sure you have current software. Now you can update this with a USB cable or you can use the phone app, that's what I use, to update to the latest version of the software. Now also too, what I really like about this that sets it a little bit apart from some of the gimbals on the market is the LCD screen. Now you can control all of the parameters of the gimbal with just the screen so you don't need to use the phone app. Although the phone app is handy and you can use that if you want, it just makes it a little easier if you're on a shoot and you want to make a quick adjustment, you can just control it right from your gimbal, which I think is really good. Now also too, we'll have a closer look at in a second, is the auto-tune feature. So once you have your camera balanced, you'll do the auto-tune. So when we get into the balance section, I'll show you how that works. Now what I like too is you can use the M button here or you can use the joystick and you can press that and you can toggle through different modes like you can on other gimbals. Now you can have just the pan follow, you can have pan and tilt, you can have various different versions of how you like to use it. Now you can also adjust the speed of how the joystick works as well. So if you prefer to use the joystick, you can control the speed of that as well. And I like how easy this is. So if you wanna do a nice slow pan in one shot, but then a quick pan in the next, all you have to do is turn this dial and you can quickly change that speed. Now to return to center, you just double click the trigger, which is opposite. So we're looking at it as if you were using the gimbal right now with the joystick toward you. The trigger's on the other side, you double click that, it always returns to center. Now if you see over here on the right hand side, if you toggle that twice, then you go into inception mode, which is that sort of barrel roll look that you may have seen. So you can quickly go to that. They also have a sport gear mode that you can go into as well. Now with the app, they have different features that you can access like time lapse. So let's get more into how we can balance this and how to auto-tune it, and we'll also look at some live footage shot with this as well. All right, in this part of the video, we're gonna do a quick balance tutorial. Quick tip before we get started, make sure that you have your camera and your gimbal balance prior to turning the power on. Make sure that you have that done. All right, so let's get started. So we have the plate already installed. I just wanna show you what it looks like. So you can use these little push buttons here to release the plate. There's one at the front, and you can slide your camera in place. So once you have that, you just lock it. You'll hear that locking sound, and then you take this lever and you lock it. So once you have it balanced, you can take your camera off and put it back in place quite easily with this. So another thing here too is, this is the lever for the fore and aft. So this is where you're gonna make your adjustment. So you can see here my camera's a little bit forward. I'm gonna just loosen this off, and I'm gonna move it back towards myself. Now make sure you keep your hands on the camera loosely so that it doesn't slide and go all over the place. So you can see I'm just sort of bouncing it back and forth until I get that adjustment. Just make these tiny little adjustments like this, a little bit more and I think will be perfect. And then I'm gonna lock this in place. Now once I have this adjustment, I'm gonna check the left to right. And that looks pretty good. Let me throw it out of wax so you can see how that would look if it wasn't balanced. You can see it's tilting to the right. I wanna go this way. So this is the perspective that you would see if you were balancing the gimbal and this was facing you. So I wanna just sort of push this lightly, make sure it's unlocked and then slide it the appropriate way. And then you can see it's still a little more tilted. I can't quite see it because I'm on the right, but you just keep moving. If you go too far, you're gonna see it's gonna to wanna to tilt that way. So just make those tiny adjustments until you get it in the window there and then it looks good. So that looks pretty good there for me. I'm gonna tighten that one. As far as this adjustment here, what you do is you put your camera like that, and if it rolls this way or this way, you undo this, and you make an adjustment this way. So pushing that way or pushing towards yourself. And the trickiest one I find is this bottom adjustment. You would just turn this lever, 
There's two ways to do this. You can mount this on a tripod and have it pointed sort of straight away from you, or you can just tilt it. So if you tilt it and the camera doesn't go out of whack, either way I turn it, if you can see it's not really going out of whack, then you have it balanced. So once we have the gimbal balanced, we can turn it on. Now we can go into the auto tune function two ways. We can use the phone app or we can do it right from the gimbal itself and then we can auto tune our current setup. So if you change to a different camera or a different camera and lens, you can auto tune it for each setup. So I'm just going to use the app. So here's the app here. And you can see we have parameter setting, remote control, creative video, camera setting, recenter, sleep, and I'm connected because it would say disconnect if I wasn't. And you can see it's set for Sony Multi. I don't have the cable connected, but you can see my camera models there. Now, if you have certain camera compatibilities, you'll be able to see what you can control using the gimbal. Now, if we go to parameter setting, you can see we have motor setting, button functions, calibration, advanced setting, configuration. If I go to motor setting, if you look down from below there, you can see auto tune. Now, when I click auto tune, you're going to start to see some adjustments happening with your camera. So you could see that it's going to check each access and make adjustments and auto tune the setup for you. Make sure that the lock is not on because that could affect everything. So make sure that the lock that you have on the gimbal is not on. So it takes a few seconds and once it's auto tuned, you're pretty much good to go. Now, another thing I want to mention too is the dead angle. So if you look down, you'll see filter, follow setting, dead angle. Now you can adjust this dead angle and what that does is it adjusts the amount of time that something happens. So for example, if you're on a pan and you twist your wrist, depends on what that setting is before that kicks in. So if you want it to kick in right away, then set it for zero. But if you like to walk with your gimbal and then kind of make a little wrist adjustment and you don't want it to kick in right away, you can adjust that. So you can adjust the pan, tilt and roll. I have mine set for 15. So that's the dead angle. I have mine set for 15. You might want to experiment with that and see what you like. Now, you can do everything. I'm going to click confirm for the auto tune. Now, you can configure everything on the app, but you can also do it on the gimbal itself. So you can see here, if we click on motor settings again, we have all those settings there. And then also, if we go back out, we have remote control. So you can use your phone app as a remote control. So for example, if we want it to pan, I have my pan set for slow. So you can see it's just a nice slow pan, but you can adjust that pan speed. So you can do your pan, you can do your tilt, you can do your roll just by using the phone app. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Also, you can see where it says speed right there, and I can adjust the speed of the pan or the tilt either on the gimbal or using the phone app. So I'm going to turn it up and then we'll go back and then you can see. So I'm going to hit recenter. It's going to go back. Now, when I click on the remote, you're going to see that this is going to happen a lot quicker. We're going to have a faster pan. So you can see now we have a faster pan and we're going to go back. And then we're also going to go up. Now, again, you can use the joystick. You can use the follow modes or you can use this remote on the phone app. So there's just some of the features also as well. We have our creative video where we have motion lapse, we have variable speed time lapse, and we have time lapse. So I'll probably make another video in the future about that, or you can always Google it if you want to see how to do that right now. So anyway, that's the rundown on how to balance, auto-tune, and some of the custom features of the Moza Air 2 gimbal. The box can also serve as a carrying case. At the top, there's the tripod grip. Just below that is the carrying case for all of your camera cables. To the left are the rechargeable batteries. At the bottom, you can see the battery charger. There's the main gimbal. Now you get two Manfrotto compatible mounts to mount your camera on. You can see there's a smaller screw and a larger screw. You get two of those. And then there's the carrying case right there. I'm gonna open it up. There's all the different cables. Check the owner's manual to see if it's compatible. There's a better look at the battery charger. So you just pop your batteries in there and you charge that via USB cable. Just a look at some of the accessories there. Now also too, once these turn green, it's charged. It takes roughly about five hours and you also get a manual. Here's a quick look at some footage shot on the Moza Air 2 gimbal.
Hey everybody, it's Craig Bitter here again. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, you can post them down below. And if you're not already a subscriber, I come up with a new video every week. So if you don't want to miss it, click on subscribe and hit that bell notification and you'll get an email update when my next video goes live. If you found these tips helpful, give me a thumbs up. And like I said, if you have any comments or questions, you can post them down below. Now, if you have a support related question about the Moza Air 2 or compatibilities, always check with the manufacturer's website. They're gonna be more up to date than I am on whatever is compatible. And like I said, if you have any support related questions, they're probably the best to deal with. Anyway, thanks again for watching this video. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.